It is the 41st millennium. Mankind battles for survival across the universe, besieged on all fronts by the heretic, the mutant, and the alien. In the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war. One faction of Space Marines stands amidst the chaos, the mightiest of the Emperor's warriors and a beacon of light in the darkness. This legion, the Ninth Legion of Adeptus Astartes, the Blood Angels. Hello, good evening. Hello everybody, how are you doing? Good evening, happy Saturday evening. Um, it's time to get your paints out guys, let's do something. Good evening, good evening, good evening. I'm just going to clean this magnifying glass real quick. How's everybody? What's happening? Anything exciting happening in you guys' lives today? I didn't really do much, apart from see the kids swimming, watch the Arsenal game, Played Final Fantasy on the PlayStation. A chill day. Good evening, Jason. Good evening, Eternal Crusader. Good evening, DM. How are you doing? Uh, I'm going to try and get some more paint on this Land Raider. I've been painting it now for, I guess, this is a few weeks. I've been doing two Land Raiders. DM, good evening. Um, because I guess I'm a sadist, or I just, I just have two Land Raiders on my current list, I guess. So, um. Yeah, I'm going to put more paint on this Land Raider. Finally cover up the last bits of white on it, I feel like. So there's a few bits that are still white. Uh, then I might do some silvers, might do some brass. Probably going to do some brass, actually. Try and get a few more colours. Maybe even do a bit of gold? We'll see. We'll see, yeah. Good evening, everyone. How is everybody? This pot of black paint is very, very almost empty, so maybe it's... I was going to say, I can't remember the last time I opened a new black paint. It must be years ago at this point. So this pot of black is on its final, final bit of life. So. Uh, DM is rocking currently 17,000 points of Blood Angels. Good for you, man. I was rocking quite... I don't think I was rocking like twelve or 14,000, but... Um, those um those legends changes at the start of tenth edition really hurt my collection. I was really quite upset about those. So I feel like I'm rocking a lot less than I was. I definitely feel like I lost like two or three thousand points. But yeah, welcome to the channel, dude. It's always nice to see new faces. It always kind of surprises me that we still do see new faces. What with like fourteen and a half thousand subscribers now, I think. Uh, yeah, I think I hit fourteen and a half thousand yesterday. So, um, I suppose at some point I'll have caught all the Blood Angels players, but not yet. Still working on it. I think there's, um, like, 20-some thousand on Reddit for Blood Angels. So I guess that's that's got to be my... That's, that's, like, my channel goal is, like, 20,000, I guess. If I get to 20,000, I'll feel pretty good about myself. I mean, I feel pretty good about 14 and a half, I'm not going to lie. I've had some time to analyse my game against the Space Wolves as well. I think there was a couple of big changes that I could make. I actually don't think I'm going to make any changes to the army list yet. I mean, I still might. I think I want a couple more games with the current list. Because I, I really think that it was my own fault that I lost. Um, and... I guess it's when you play armies you don't normally play against, you make mistakes, so you, you underestimate things, and I think that's definitely what happened this week, so, uh... Yeah, I mean, I've lost a lot of times against Death Guard, uh, and then I've come back much, much stronger against Death Guard, and, like, I feel like in 10th edition and Death Guard I usually beat them now, but it really comes down to repetition, right? Like, if you have a lot of experience against a faction, you're going to do a lot better than if you have no experience. Um... Burgosaurus, been a little while. How are you, dude? Happy Friday night. Sorry, Friday night, Saturday night. Got my days confused. I was off work this week. So, uh, the kids were, like, nursery was closed for the... Uh, for the school holidays or the summer... Easter holidays, I guess it was. But I don't even know what day it is. No, it's, it's Saturday. It's 100% Saturday.
But anyone watched the tactics video yesterday? Anyone willing to give Blade Guard plus a Judas ER a shot? Pretty surprising amount of damage they do when they get charged, when you actually map it out, right? Bad Francis, good evening. Uh, you watch my videos instead of painting your own stuff. Dude, just listen, just get out your own stuff right this minute. You don't need to watch me paint. I'm the greatest painter. Get out your own stuff, chill out, paint. If you've got a question, shoot it in chat. That's, what, that's kind of what the Hobby Hangouts are all about. Um, we, know, we know that I'm not the greatest painter. A lot of people come into the channel and criticise me or tell me... Maybe not criticise, but just tell me that there's things I could definitely be doing better than I know. But yeah, I mean, in the moment I literally get... This is my one paint session this week. So I will paint once a week for two hours. So I, I'm the most casual... I was a casual painter before I had kids, man. Since I've had kids, it's gone even worse. Now it's like super casual. If it wasn't super casual before, it is now. I mean, I guess before it was at least uh, I would paint like three or four times a week because all my paints and stuff were just set up in the living room. So I just like, when my wife was watching something on like Netflix or something I didn't care about, I just got my paints out. And, and my wife watches a lot of reality TV, so that I guess that means I painted quite a lot. Maybe not painted well, but painted a lot. Marius, good evening, how are you? Having a good day? Um, Jason's been running Blade Guard, needing to find the points for the fight first. You do. I think the points for the fight first are one of the strongest things that they can do. Um, like I said, I think they become unchargeable for certain units. I think that's a very powerful tool that, I ha that you have, that you can utilize, right? If you've got a unit that the opponents cannot charge, without taking like unacceptable amount of losses i mean i guess the opponents could charge it and then fight on death but i mean that's two cp that's quite a big investment i mean i did fight on death i think twice this week but um no no, no I, sorry i fought on death once and interrupted once maybe that's what it was uh Alunda, good evening. As a Space Wolf player, I'd like to hear your feedback on the last Space Wolf list you faced. Saw the match, nice game. Maybe you could have uh, Alunda, overwatched Lorenzo the Radicators. Lorenzo donated five euros via Super Chat. As SW player, I'd like to hear your feedback on the last SW list you faced. Saw the match, nice game. Maybe you could have overwatched the Eradicators. Yeah, I mean, maybe you could have overwatched the Eradicators. I felt like with just uh, six LAS, sorry, four LAS cannons coming out from the... The Land Raider probably wasn't 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 viable CP wise. Um, that whole game was uh, there, there. There's two big mistakes on on from my part. I think one big mistake was I put my Kalidus Assassin super aggressive uh, turn one. Uh, I shouldn't have been aggressive with them turn one. I need my Kalidus Assassin to survive to mess with their stratagems and also um, if I put him down on the objective in the middle. I would have scored more points than the, the teleport homer behind enemy lines because he could have teleport homer in the middle for three points and then he would have held the primary for five points. And then arguably I might have held that primary for another couple of turns with the assassin and he couldn't have shot the assassin anyway because it's low and operative. So I think I made a huge mistake with the assassin. So that probably cost me like, cost me at least three points, possibly eight points. Uh, and if the assassin had survived at that point, maybe even more points. It was only like a 12 point game, right? So the assassin cost me 8 points. The overwatch on the... overwatch against the... the tank? Uh, it was actually a huge swing, because I did the maths afterwards, and I was like, S Eradicators statistically probably shouldn't kill a land raider with overwatch. Uh, even with the bursting sixes, and even with uh, the biologist, they should they should maybe do like 10 damage to it, but they shouldn't kill it. Um, so, possibly my mistake, again, moving the Land Raider, I could have had it sit still. I already made a charge into that unit of Eradicators with the Death Company, so it wasn't a be-all in it. It wasn't like the Blade Guard had to make that charge. The Blade Guard just needed to move forward. 
So two huge mistakes on my part. Honestly, I could have probably reserved my um, Redeemer as well, which would have been like... Which would have really screwed him up in his early game because the Radicators wouldn't have had a great target to go after. So I, I want to say that like inexperience against Space Wolves cost me that game. And that's why I try and get all the different factions onto the channel because I hate... I hate playing that sort of game at a tournament where I have inexperience against an army. Because generally, if you've got no experience against them, you're not going to know exactly how to play it. Um, I have played Space Wolves a couple of times at tournaments in 10th, but I hadn't played Gladius Space Wolves. And I guess I hadn't played Garen in 10th, and Garen is a very good player. So credit to him for beating me, but um, I think it was self-inflicted, honestly. Like, I, th I think that the Assassin placement was a huge mistake. I was way too greedy, um, or way too confident, I guess. Um, I think it was greed, but the, 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 it was a weird greed because I could have got more points elsewhere on the board. It was like a bad greed, or it was like a heat of the moment greed that didn't need to happen. So the assassin, assassin placement was terrible, and then um, yeah, both. The Land Raiders were really the, the swing there, really messed up my play with the Land Raiders, which is funny because I've, I've been playing the Land Raiders fairly well, but, you know, like I said, you learn something, I'll definitely respect the Biologist Eradicators a lot more next time, right? Uh, was there anything you saw, Linda, that confused you about the game? Is there a Blood Angels Commander Discord? Yes. Uh, you just type exclamation mark Discord, dude. Uh, Ross, and you'll see... Uh, oh, the, my bot should tell you the link to the Discord. Yes, there is 100% a Blood Angels Commander Discord. We got quite a lot of members. I think it was like 4,000 at the last check or something. Um, so it's a fairly big slash active Discord. If you become a channel member, you get access to our members only room as well. For, uh, I try and make an appearance... I would say most days I try and answer a few questions in the members only room or just chat in the members only room. Um, a bigger brush might be helpful. I mean, it might be. I'm, um, I'm trying to make not too many mistakes here. I do have a bigger brush I was painting the Land Raider with last week. It's on the table. I'm just going to... Probably going to move to a bigger brush when I maybe when I get away from. I'm trying not to paint over too much of the grey that I painted on this back bit already. Uh, opinions on the list. The wool, the uh, all the different. Um, when I first saw the list, I honestly thought you had too many characters. But I guess all those characters really buff up all the squads. Kind of. Like the... Wo I forget what they're called. Um, Thunderwolf Cavalry. The Thunderwolf Cavalry were really effective. Um, in hindsight, I, I would have... What I should have done is reserve the Redeemer. And use the Redeemer to overwatch... Like, bring it in from reserve and hit the Thunderwolf Cavalry with all the flamers. And then the second they move, overwatch them. Um, because I think two rounds of those flamers would probably have killed a whole squad of Thunderwolves. Um, and some of my other firepower b bounced off the, the Thunderwolves because of their four-up in runs. So when I first saw the list, I thought to myself, like, I think he's got too many characters, but I guess the Thunderwolves performed really, really well. Um, they got a lot of, uh, advantage out of the Salt Doctrine as well, because that advance and charge is very useful for the Thunderwolves. Um... It's synergy. I mean, that advancing charge for Blind Angels was very good as well. <laughs> Marius says he'd die in the hill out of a destroyed lander. I don't think so, Marius. Why? Why do you think? Why do you think so passionately? Like, um, usually, the rules are. The, uh, you're thinking because usually the, the, the data sheet rules overwrite any other rules, but I think that the fact that the transport was actually destroyed meant that you had to play with the destroyed rules. 
I think we did that right. I don't think... I think if you destroy a transport, you're not able to make a charge. I think that seems... That seems right. It was kind of obnoxious in previous editions when... You know, you would destroy a Dakari transport and then they just spill out all those over... Uh, Obset guys onto the objective and stuff. I think... I think we played that right. I really do. Um... But, do you know what? That hadn't happened to me. Like, I hadn't lost one of my Land Raiders to Overwatch before. And again, it's good it happened on stream and not at a, at a, at a tournament, right? Because I'll be more... Be more, um... Vigilant, or I'll be more prepared for that potential. I guess. Right, like if I think that the Land Raider can be destroyed in Overwatch, like I, I have to be like, right, well I can't really move that Land Raider. And sometimes, right, when you're in a game like that, because that was a tough game and it was an opponent against, it was against an opponent that I have never beaten. Um, so there was definitely like, part of it was like, I was getting excited, right? Because I was like, ooh, my Blade Guard are going to charge the Eradicators, my Death Company are going to charge his Blade Guard. So I'm going to get to make, like, a bunch of charges here, and I'm going to be able to kill, like, a bunch of models. So, like, you know when they say, like, um, the blinkers are on, like, on your... Um... That's what I felt like it was. Like, I, I guess I got overexcited, thinking that I could do a ton of damage to him. And I didn't respect the Eradicators. Um... And I know Eradicators are good, because I've used them before. I guess just when I used them with the Biologist, they didn't do all that much. Yeah. It was a, it was a, it was a good game. It was a good learning game. Um, I'd like to play it again. I just don't know if we'll get another chance before the GT. But um, regardless, I feel like I, I learned a bit. And you don't really learn that much when you win games, do you? I feel like you learn a lot more when you lose. Um... The ironic thing is that actually pushed me further up into the top 10 of the Tabletop Tactics League. So I'm 8th now. Or at least after the game I was 8th. I haven't checked it again since Wednesday. But I was 10th before the game, so iron I ironically the lose pushed me up more into the top 10. Which I guess you still get victory points and stuff for losing, right? Uh, the fight first video was terrifying for what? The blade guard or for something else? I mean, that's why I use the blade guard over the sanguinar, right? Like, I just park them. I take them in a land raider. I usually try and get them to the middle of the board. I park them. I mean, even though their transport was destroyed this week, they were still alive at the end of the game, parked in the middle of the... Parked in the middle of the board, just holding the middle. I just needed to get to the middle a bit quicker. I, I think I, I think I made a huge mistake with the the land raiders this week. It's fine. You got to make those mistakes. You got to make the mistakes. Better to make them on practice games. Good evening, James. How are you? Thank you so much for the seven euros, by the way, Belinda. I really do appreciate it. You know, yeah, I just I feel like Garen usually ends up going, like I think he was on the top table at the Brewhammer event where he came. I think he was, yeah, because there was three players at Brewhammer this year, or the, the last Brewhammer that went 4-0 and Garen was one of them. So he's playing, he's playing at a very high standard. Um, so it was good, it was good practice. Um, like I said, he, he said he might be more, he might come back on the channel again, so... I mean, he enjoyed his time, it's just a long drive for him to get here to go on the channel, I guess.
Uh, yeah, I think I think the blade. Well, like I said in the comments, Marius, the blade guard with the Judici art. I mean, they're great in um, Gladius as well, right? Because like, Blood Angels don't get any bonus when they fight first, and you can't even use Lance when you fight first. That is a bit of an annoyance that you can't use Lance when you fight first, but um, it's just the way it is. But yeah, I, I think the Blade Guard are very. They're a very durable unit as well. They're surprisingly durable because you can always... It's the three wounds per model and the fact that occasionally you do spike four-up saves. Like, it almost seems to happen to me in every game. Like, I spike a few four-up saves. You know, like, it's like eight saves on four-up. Oh, I made six of them. So I only lose one blade guard for your whole squad attacking them. Like, that seems like that happens reasonably often for me. Judas CRs are obnoxiously expensive on eBay. Build your own one, man. It's just a guy with a sword. Like, it's literally uh, a guy with a sword. Um, unfortunately, they never released him as a single model, right? So, like, uh, could you build... Could you buy... Do you know what a good model for him? Because someone else was asking about this, saying, like, I don't want to spend, like, 80 bucks on Judas CR. What about the Emperor's Champion? The is, I think he's a Dark Angels model? He's like just a single guy holding a sword up in the air, right? He's not going to get shot, or you're not going to have to worry about him getting shot, um, because he's going to be with the squad of blade guard, really. Um, if you're worried about him holding a sword way up in the air, you could just do a little bit of a conversion, like put a different arm on him. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's just a guy with a sword, like just a Primaris Marine with a sword. Do not spend a hundred bucks on one, just make your own one. Um, yours will then be unique and it will be cool and you'll feel proud that you've done it and if you've never done conversions before I have done a few videos on this channel about conversions just go to town, just snip off arms just have fun with it man don't have to be perfect, no one's going to check I wouldn't spend a lot of money you were looking at a few Black Templars yeah I mean that would work as well but I think, they're the, I think there is one that's like the Emperor's Champion or a I mean, you could maybe even make one from like a blade guard lieutenant or something, just or a blade. Uh, is it a, pri a primaris captain or a blade guard captain? Just get rid of the shield. Put something in the other hand. Put like a if you've got any blood angels kits at all. Put like a blood uh, chalice or something in the other hand. That would work. Marius is just using his chaplain. Yeah, hundred percent. Why not? Guys, if you get two seconds tonight on the stream, if you could hit the like button out, it would. Uh, I would appreciate it. it would help me out. You know, do the the YouTube algorithm nonsense. Right, that bit at the back of this uh, tank had been annoying me now for a few weeks because it was just it was the only bit that was still white. So it's not white anymore. Um, I'm gonna have to go around there and clean that up after, but that's fine. That had really been annoying me. Looking at it on the live streams, thinking I really need to paint the back of that tank. So it's done. Evening, Fraser, how are you doing? But yeah, I would, I would 100% convert a Judas CR. It's a bit ridiculous that they don't sell some of those models in individual kits and they only sell them in like giant 80 pound boxes or something like that. Uh, like the video you have all your arms replaced with 3D printed power fists and infernal pistols. I haven't actually done that for a bunch of my guys. I'm just I just tell people before the game that they're infernal pistols and power fists on every death company. I think WYSIWYG for me kinda died in 9th edition. Games Workshop changed the rules of models one too many times for me to try and keep up with WYSIWYG anymore, honestly. So I just don't bother.
DM's painting up his third Spartan. Nice for you. This is actually, like, I've never actually finished painting a Land Raider. So, um, when I finally finish one of these two, this will be my first ever Land Raider. Uh, the, if you need Blood Angels icons, are you talking about plastic ones or are you talking about, like, uh, transfers? Um, Fraser. Good evening, Michael. Good evening, Martin. How are you guys doing? Good afternoon. Oh, good afternoon. I guess you're from America. Good afternoon. Um, to the American friends. We've got someone from America coming to our GT in June, which is pretty cool. He actually messaged me today, or maybe it was, I mean, I got, I saw the message today. So maybe bit, uh, the time zones is like eight hours difference. So um, someone is flying all the way from Baltimore to go to our GT. And I checked the population of Baltimore. The population of Baltimore is like 750,000 people, right? The population of Scotland is like five million. So like, Baltimore is like more than a tenth of our entire country, but someone's coming because I, I sent him a message and I was like, you know that like Scotland is pretty small, right? Because um, I asked him what time he was arriving to see if we can catch up. Um, so one of the channel members is coming to the tournament all the way from Baltimore, USA, which kind of blows my mind, but um, it's cool. Uh, we did have James on the channel last year. He, yeah, James Fisher, he was from Chicago, so that was cool as well. He actually invited me out to stay with him in Chicago and go to Adepticon um, in the future, so I might be able to do that one year. Now it's five in Virginia, so it's evening. Virginia is East Coast, I'm guessing. Uh, if you're looking for plastic bits, the Ball Predator is a good kit that has some plastic bits that you can use on other vehicles. I think it's got two or three insignias on it. At least the last time I bought a Ball Predator it did. Um, a few different insignias you can use for... Um, giving your other vehicles a bit of Blood Angels love or a bit of Blood Angels theming, I guess, was... So if you've got a Ball Predator kit, that's probably where you want to start, Fraser. If you don't have a Ball Predator kit, I mean, Ball Predators are pretty good at the moment. You could always just get one. Um, and, I mean, the Ball Predator kit, I think, comes with the options to make regular Predators and Annihilators as well. So it's not like you're stuck with only the Ball Predator. The Ball Predator is great for transfers. Do you think if I have a squad of aggressors, three with flamers and three with bolters, it would be cool to run them all as bolters? Yeah, nobody cares, Marius. Uh, all my aggressors have bolters, but I've run them as all flamers before. All my centurions have flamers, I've run them as metal guns before. Um, just tell your opponent before the, like, I was going to say, so obviously in my games, my opponents always share me the lists like a few days before because we share the lists for the games that I play on the channel. But before that, we would we would always just tell her, you know, as long as you as long as you tell your opponent, so they're like all oh, all you know, like it's the same. Like we used to have devastator squads that had guys that were missile launchers, but we're running them all as multi maltas and stuff, you know. And like I think as long as you tell your opponent what the models are, they don't really care if you go to games workshop event i mean i think that's a different story but um i don't live near a games workshop unfortunately so i never get to go to games workshop events i do i do want to go to the aberdeen one at some point but it's not close um i actually don't think i think they only do like one gt a year at the aberdeen games workshop as well I mean, games, the Games Workshop stores themselves aren't n notoriously the, the biggest tournaments, right? I mean, Warhammer World's like a different kettle of fish, I guess.
We got an RTG in May the 4th in Aberdeen. Oh, cool. I was actually almost going to be in Aberdeen on May the 4th because um, they're showing Star Wars at the cinema and I was thinking of taking my daughter, but last minute plans means that we're not going to be there. Uh, have we got many lists for the army list show tomorrow? There's always lots of lists at the moment, man. Um, I probably have at least a pool of 10 or 15 to choose from. Uh, yeah, my closest store is like... Um, the closest official Games Workshop store is probably like... 75 miles. Aberdeen is the biggest Warhammer store in the world that isn't Warhammer World. Are you serious? No way. Is that true? Nah, I seen a, a YouTube video of like a Japanese store that was giant, like a like Hong Kong store or something. Like Games Workshop have only recently moved to Hong Kong or Japanese or something. I saw it on like YouTube. It wasn't like Squidmore, but it was definitely like some channel. It was some channel I don't think I'd ever heard of, actually. He like visited the Japanese store for Warhammer and it was giant. Maybe that was true and it's not now, I don't know. Yeah, well, I mean, Scotland is a small country, man. So yeah, there isn't, I guess, um, I live very, very, very far north as well. Like, I live so far north that for like a hundred miles, uh, there's no, there's no dual carriageway for like a hundred miles, which means like, you have one car going one way and one car going the other way on the main road for like a hundred miles. Um... Because Inverness to Aberdeen, Inverness is like 36 miles from here, Aberdeen's like 66, yeah, so for like a hundred and some miles, I want to say 10 miles of it has more than one lane. The rest of it is one lane one way, or like one way going north, one lane going north, one lane going south. If you get stuck behind a lorry doing 40 miles an hour, then you're stuck behind a lorry doing 40 miles an hour for an indeterminate period of time. You need to know the road well enough to feel comfortable about overtaking on the other side of the road when there could be oncoming traffic on that side of the road. Which is always interesting, right? Should we have let the Romans in? Yeah, we didn't let them in, did we? They don't want to come this far north anyway, I don't think. It's fine, I order most of my Warhammer online anyway. It's cheaper online than it is to buy it in the store. I get that you get a nice experience in the store, but um, everything's got so expensive these days. If I can get something cheaper online, I'll probably get it online. A few years ago, I remember going into like, we had, a, we had one video game shop in the town that I live in and it's gone now. But I remember walking into it, I wanted to buy like, well, it was 2015 actually, and it was the, it was the, like the remake of Doom, like the 2015 remake. I remember like walking into the shop and saying to them like, have you got Doom? And they're like, yeah, and it's 54.99. And I'm like, okay, I pull up Amazon on my phone while I'm in the store and it's like 34.99 delivering tomorrow because of Prime. I'm like, hmm. You know, it's not like a local store, it was like a big it was a big branded store so I'm like it's not like I'm supporting local business here giving them 20 more pounds this is a lot of money so I just said no and just ordered it on Prime the can has stopped by the way has it? I must have nicked I would have stopped did it go to sleep? hmm oh I think my app crashed cool that doesn't happen very often. Let's try again. 
No devices detected. Well, you're lying to me because there's literally my phone plugged in right there. I think he's meaning the overhead camera. There we go. I'm buying a new phone next month. This phone is so bad, like, um... It's not a bad phone, it's just old as crap, so it's like the battery... You take it off the charger for like 20 minutes and it's down to like 75% battery. So yeah, I, I, I need a new phone. I figure if I go away anywhere without like an extra battery pack, my phone probably lasts like 5 hours at best. I've had it like way too long. I haven't been away anywhere because of, we've got two young children, but um, I'm sure we'll get away at some point. So I need a new phone. Uh, the only reason I go to GW is if I want something that's the web store only. I'll get it delivered to the store rather than play to postage. Yeah, I mean, I guess if I get something that's like a web store exclusive, I guess I just order it to, to my house and pay the postage. They've got better with the postage because you used to have to pay postage on just about anything. And I think they, they because of COVID, they lowered how much. I think you get free postage on like 25 bucks and like every model is literally 25 bucks now. So I don't think there's much you can order that will not get free postage anymore i could be wrong maybe they put it back up but for a while there it was tw it was definitely like free postage on 25 bucks and every single primaris marine is a single every single character is 25 bucks now right do you have any 3d prints of blood angels units um no but i've got some fake cast or whatever you call them so i've got some models that were um I don't know what you call them. They're not official. They're like recasts, I think. Is, yeah. So I, I bought some recasts. Uh, someone 3D printed me some um, Primaris jump packs because I needed some of them. One of the channel members sent me 15 of them. So that was very cool. So I guess I've got a couple of 3D printed things he ran there. But um, I don't really go out of my... Like, I'm not a 3D printing guy. I don't really have space for a 3D printer. But I do, I do have a few things that are, I guess... Um, not official, fake, or whatever you call them. Is it free Deathwing Terminator in the GW store? Is that the model of the month, is it? Good evening, Trivial Pursuit. How are you? China cast. Yeah, some people call them China cast, don't they? I haven't bought that much Warhammer since the Legends, all the Space Marine stuff though, honestly. Like, that was kind of a... I don't want to say it was like a breaking point for me, but it was just like, well, when they, when they Legend all those stuff, I was like, right, well, I'm not buying any more Firstborn Marines. Um, and Blood Angels don't have that many... Like, we have some reasonable Primaris options, but it's not like I could... I feel like I can't really build a force purely on Primaris models, so yeah, I haven't I haven't bought that much stuff since the Legends and all that. All those models. But I think it was a weird choice to Legends all those models, because I used to buy, like, a lot of Forge World stuff just because it was fun to have, right? Like, um... I had three Forge World Dreadnoughts. I had two Super Heavy Tanks. I had a Tarak Siege Drill, I had a Vindicator Laser Destroyer, I had a couple of um, Inquisitors. Like, I just had a lot of, like, I, I was buying Forge World stuff, like, not every month. 
every couple of months I'd probably buy a, a new Forge World model. They weren't always the most competitive things, but they were they were cool projects and they were fun to do. My purchasing is based on can I like if I can't run them at a tournament, then I'm I'm kind of uninterested in them. Uh, do you think what they did with AOS was better? What they did with 40k was better. Um, well, everybody's losing their mind over AOS. From my understanding of it. Uh, but I do think, like, some of those AOS models are only six years old. So the fact that they're legendsing... Well, get away, fly. God damn it. How did a fly get in here? Okay. Um, the fact they're legendsing models that are six years old is... I don't like it. I think models should have like a 15 year minimum. They should have some sort of expiry on them, right? Like where it's like, we will not stop supporting these for 15 years. Even then, I mean, I'm not really happy about it. But like six years is is a joke. You can, you can buy a kit and leave it in a cupboard for six years. I know I've done it plenty times. I don't want to buy a kit that I like. I'm focused on something else, I put it in a cupboard, come back to it six years later, oh, you can't use that kit, it's legends. They discontinued the Blood Angels Lieutenant. Who, Tolmeron? Is he discontinued? I mean, what was the point in Tolmeron anyway? He was just a lieutenant with a power sword, but... Um, did, did he even really have anything Blood Angels about him? Crycheck just got his first jump intercessor today. He's thinking about magnetizing and painting them all black. I mean, if you go to Games Workshop tournaments, I guess magnetize them for sure. I mean, as far as painting them black, that's just personal preference, man. If you want them to be potentially used as like. The thing is, like, you can run a Red Death Company. Nothing in the. They changed all that stuff. There's nothing in the rules that says you can't run a Red Death Company these days, right? Tell me, what did Medicore Hobby stay about the discontinued models, man? Because honestly, I don't follow that much Age of Sigmar stuff. I mean, I'll take a look at it occasionally, but yeah, it's not. I watched Valrak's video on it. Uh, I read the article, but I didn't follow it much more than that. But I have some of those models that got legends, and like I said, I've had them for about six years sat in a box, I've never got round to them and now they're legends. And I definitely don't like that. Can you use Kill Team uh, Scouts? Uh. Yeah, I mean, the Skill Team Scouts box is the only way to get the Scouts for 40k, as far as I'm aware right now. I also don't like it when they do that, where they put um, certain, I guess, kits into Kill Team 
So they did that with the prior Nexus and the... What was it? The Heavy Intercessors, like the first wave of Heavy Intercessors you could only get in the Kill Team box. Which is like, but what if I don't care about Kill Team? Why, why do I have to buy the Kill Team rules to get the, the Heavy Intercessors? So yeah, I'm... I suppose it's the same as like people saying on here like they can't get hold of a Judici R and it's like, well the Judici R was only in one random box. I don't even remember what box Judici R came in, it was uh... It was Indomitus, wasn't it? Was it Indomitus? No. Judici R was last edition. Yeah, no, it was Indomitus because Leviathan was this edition. My old brain is failing me. Hello, Dwayne. Good evening. I mean, my thought is if, if models aren't selling, would it not be better to give them rules that make them exciting so that they sell rather than just be like, we're discontinuing them? That's what I would do. But hey, I mean, we can debate that all day long, I suppose. We aren't Games Workshop. We don't know what the ins and outs of keeping all those old kits around is. But um, I can tell you how it feels. All I can tell you is that how it feels to be a player who has a lot of kits that just one day out of the blue get told they're legends. It sucks. Like, it sucks so bad. Like, it sucks to a point where, like, you're almost reconsidering if you want to ever invest another penny in the hobby. Like, that's how bad it sucks. You know, like... I don't know how you even hearken it to, like, another... another industry or something, right? But, like, I don't know, you've bought a video game that had DLC in it, and one day they just tell you, like, hey, that DLC you bought, you can't play it anymore. You're like, what? But I, but I bought it. I spent time on it. I... Uh, I, you know, I did the thing that you required me to get the DLC, but, but no, you can't use it anymore. Like, it sucks so hard, man. And it's such a, it's just such a negative reaction from everybody that affects. Like, no one has a, po like, maybe like one in ten people have a positive thing to say about it. Most people just see their collections get decimated and just like... Yeah. Just, you have to swallow the pill and I guess... Some people don't, some people just, that that's, that's their like, peace out moment, like, you know. So whenever, whenever the, the stuff goes legends, there's always going to be big drama on YouTube, because someone somewhere is peacing out, because something they had is legends did. <laughs> Excuse me, McFatson says, thinking about half a Leviathan pack to start my Blood Angels army, are the models worth it? Uh, without much melee jump packs. Well, I mean, I've been running Blood Angels now this whole edition. Uh, I have a really high win rate with my current list. I think I've played it. I think I've played eight Sons of Sanguinius games now in one seven. The one game I lost this week was probably my own mistake. Yeah, I, I pretty much admitted it was my own mistake that I lost this week's games. Uh, it mistakes and inexperience. So basically, and I only run fifteen jump troops. So take that as you will. Like you can run a really good solid Blood Angels list that will kill lots and lots of opponents and beat most average to reasonable players and you only need 15 guys with jump packs to do it. You can run more obviously if you want, but I do it just fine with only 15 McBatson. So if you want to buy half of an Indomitus set to get you started, there's some good stuff in that. Uh, the Ballista Dreadnought is very useful. I was using that in a lot of the games. What? Let me try and remember what's an Indomitus. The Infernus Marines, I can take them or leave them. Um, the Blister Dreadnought is most useful. Let me think for a minute. I'm gonna wind my brain back, like... 
I'm just going to turn around and look at the Indomitus box because I'm not remembering. Uh, oh, you get Blade Guard in here? Oh, well, they're useful. Yeah, I'm running six Blade Guard. You've got the Captain, you've got the Lieutenant, you've got the Chaplain, you've actually got the Judas Yard in there. The Judas Yard is amazing. You've got Eradicators in there, you've got Assault Intercessors in there. Yeah, like, I'd say 80% of the Indomitus box is pretty useful for Blood Angels. The only units that I'm not sold on that I would basically paint last would be um, the bikes because I don't think anyone anyone is running the bikes with any degree of success. Um, but people are running a lot of the other stuff. I'm running Blade Guard in every list. Uh, Eradicators, I've ran them I ran them at a tournament. Did pretty well. Almost finished top three. Hold on, I think that's my daughter crying. I'll be right back. No, false alarm. Must have heard something. Maybe it's my wife watching TV or something. Sound like a kid crying. Uh, wrong box. Oh, he was thinking of Leviathan. Okay, well, you told me the wrong box. I thought you said, oh, have a Leviathan. My sorry, I can't read apparently. Leviathan puts the bliss to spread not. Got that part right. Well, so then Leviathan. The new Terminators? You know what? A lot of people use the Apothecaries that comes in the Leviathan. Terminators are not so hot on. Then Furnace Marines I'd probably try and convert because I don't really see much use to the Furnace Marines. But. Oops. The Ballista Dreadnought is good. I've got two of them. I use the Ballista Dreadnought in quite a lot of lists. I use it at a tournament as well. Evening, Reziel, how you doing? I don't know why I read Indomitus, man. Maybe it's late. It's only 20 past 10. Uh, if it's... Maybe I've had a long day, I don't know. But yeah, I, I don't necessarily feel like you need to have more than... Yeah, I, I, I'm not going to put more than 15 jump units in my uh, Blood Angels army as it currently stands. So... Watch that. I'm, I'm running all Death Company as well, so that's 400 points. So literally, if you think about a 2,000 point list, I'm putting 20% of my troops are jump infantry. That's it. I'm not putting anything else in. Don't convert them furnace, John. You know how that goes at some point, they'll be OP. Do you know what? We say that, but there's some units that never go OP. Like, it's generally, you're right, Reziel, it's generally a good idea to just paint and get everything ready. Right? Like, if you bought a box of stuff, it's generally always the best idea to just paint them and get them ready, because I had six aggressors that sat on a shelf for like two years and then all of a sudden the aggressors are the hot shit and you want to run aggressors and everybody's wanting to run six of them and I had them all ready to go and it was a great feeling, right? It was like, oh, I had these models for ages, they were rubbish and now they're amazing. Um, and that is a great feeling. But sometimes units don't ever get that. Think of Reavers, for example. Like, Reavers just have never been given that glow up that they so badly need. So for the most part, while it is generally a good idea to just 
if you can get a if you can get a good deal like on a half uh, box, it's a good idea to just get it and paint it all Blood Angels and be ready. But um, sometimes, because I painted my Reavers and I still feel like what a waste of my time that was. Because five years on, Reavers are still absolute garbage. Um, I don't think Reavers will ever get good rules. In fact, I'd be willing to put money on Reavers will never get good rules, and then they'll go Legends because they don't sell. I mean, they might. The only reason to buy. It, I mean, Reavers have some of the coolest he Space Marine helmets in the game, so you buy them for the cool helmets. That's it. You buy them for the cool helmets. You put them on other units. The helmets look really cool on Blood Angels models. But beyond that, I don't know why else you would ever buy Reavers. Uh, I don't think that you can do anything with uh, Infernus Marines, man, because they've got no AP. I think if they had, even if they just had one AP, one, not asking for much, I think even if the Infernus Marines had one AP, they could be viable. Because then it would be like Heavy Flamers and you would actually kill some stuff. But the fact that they have no AP just neuters them against too many units like imagine you know like because you never if you drop them against terminators you're going to kill literally nothing if they had one ap and you had 10 d6 shots then maybe you actually start killing a couple of terminators and i just think that the furnace marines for me are a missed opportunity and, and like i said all they needed was probably one ap or a better ability right you know like their aggressor's ability like if they shoot the closest target they can get one ap or if they they shoot a target that another unit's already shot or something, I don't know. But their their ability that just makes people take a battle shot test is underwhelming and most of the time probably not worth it. I played an art game and 10 Infernus Marines were a threat. Yeah, but sure, they're going to be a threat against one army. They're not something you can put into your take all corners list, and I, I think that's their problem. Um, and maybe they could have been, but they're not. Uh, you were lucky to find a bunch of old shotguns and converted the Reavers uh, into scouts. I bet you they make pretty cool looking scouts, man. You know what, you could almost just play them as scouts now if you got them on the right size bases because scouts are good with pistols and knives now, right, for Blood Angels? Because the scouts with knives hit at strength 6 for Blood Angels, which is kind of interesting to be honest. Scout knives hit, have more strength than, than Infernus Marine Flamers, I guess. Battleshock should decrease weapon skill by one to be really useful. Scouts. Do I say scouts funny? Scouts. Like Arnie, get to the chopper. You could convert them to combi weapon stern guard, you certainly could. There's something that's just not quite there with Infernus Marines. But 10, 10 Primaris bodies, if you're getting them cheap, is not the worst thing in the world, because you can convert them, right? I only realized yesterday that scout units make their dedicated transport scout. Totally forgot. So what scout units we got to get a transport up the board early? Scouts make their dedicated transport scout. Where's that written, man? Is that on the scout data sheet? I completely missed that as well. Is that on? Yeah, I, I have no memory of this rule, Highland Phoenix. Where are you reading it?
Oral Scout deployment abilities. Oh, is it not? Yeah, I was going to say, only if they're dedicated transport scouts, right? You can't, like, throw scouts in a land raider and get scout, right? It has to be a dedicated transport. Okay. It's a sad thing that this land speeder storm got legends, isn't it? Is that that model was great, plus it it worked for scouts really well, didn't it? I feel a little sad that we sort of lost attack bikes and scout bikes. Uh, sorry, it's attack bikes and land speeders. There's kind of like a little hole in the Space Marine Army that never got refilled, right? So Scood, uh, Blood Angels 5 and Scout Squad could be a chainsaw, three knives and a shotgun. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I was running mine with... Um, Two shotguns, the sniper rifle and the missile launcher, but honestly the sniper rifle and the missile launcher never hit and never do any damage, so yeah, you may as well just replace them with knives, honestly. Because you the scouts rarely stand still, so the missile launcher only ever hits on fours, which in reality means it basically never hits. Uh, I don't think I've ever done any damage. I've used that missile launcher like across like 10 games and I don't think it ever did a single point of damage. So yeah, shotguns, knives, chainsword is definitely the way to run the scouts I feel like. For Blood Angels anyway. I bought four attack bikes about four months before 10th edition dropped. Yeah, I bought that um, ironclad and the Vindicator Laser Destroyer and the Terex Seizure all about four months before 10th edition drops. That was about £300 of models and then it was like £300 of commission painting. Yeah, my, the, the model that I was probably most upset was my Forge World Dreadnoughts, probably. Because everybody had, like, a lot of Forge World Dreadnoughts. It felt like, like lots of people had Forge World Dreadnoughts. I was probably going to buy more as well. And that's the, that's the messed up thing, is, like... I feel like a lot of, um... I feel like a lot of 40k players did buy Forge World units, though. Like... I know that they were a pain in the ass to glue together, and I know that they were a pain in the ass to paint, and I know that they were always warped and needed washed and stuff, but it was like a project, and it was like fun. And I guess... I don't know. I feel like we lost... The good things that we gained in 10th edition, 
we're probably outnumbered by the things we lost. You know, we lost sort of we lost some of the fun in building army lists. We lost some of the fun in buying unique and uh, quirky models. There was definitely something fun and quirky about Forge World. Plastic Leviathan. I, I I was fortunate. I never actually bought any of those plastic models, but I was. I mean, I'm only fortunate in the fact that they legends them. I guess right. I quite fancied getting a plastic one at some point. World Eaters lost half the models they have from Forge World. Yeah, World Eaters has got a pretty small range now, I guess. Brett, who played World Eaters, was forever using his Forge World stuff against me, too. I don't know. 10th edition for me has been quite a weird edition, I guess. The Codex releases have seemed slow. And then all the removals have just felt a bit rubbish. You think your next Forge World kit is going to be Sanguinius? I, was, I, I mean, I never got Sanguinius, but I was always thinking about it. I figured I would, like, proxy it into 40k at some point. I don't know. I guess I'm not a good example of, like, recent 40k purchases, because I have made none. I think since... I was gonna say I did buy the new captain in one box of assault intercessors, because I was kind of in a, I was kind of in a position where I I would buy every single new Primaris release. That's what annoyed me probably the most about the removal of stuff. It was like I still bought everything that was new. Like I still bought like I still probably have one of every Primaris kit. Like I can't think I can't think of a Primaris unit I don't know uh, I don't own. I mean, I even have the stupid... Okay, there is one. I don't own the, the the bunker thing, whatever. The Hammerfall bunker. Never bought a Hammerfall bunker. I did buy a Fire fire Strike servo turret. And do you know what? I never bought an Invader ATV. So I bought most of the Primaris stuff, I guess. There's a couple, very few, that I didn't buy. And then since the... Since the legends and stuff, I haven't really, I've my my spending went like way down because of the legends changes. Uh, the Blood Angels Forge World Dreadnoughts are nice. Yeah, I mean, I had I had the Leviathan one for sure. I feel like uh, I feel like I had the uh, con one one contemptor as well. Actually, yeah, no, because I had two Forge World contemptors, and one was the Blood Angels one. One was just like a regular contemptor, and one was the Blood Angels one.
you got the, the Fire Strike and the ATV with Imperial Magazine for 8 quid or something. Well done, man. That was a good... Uh, I know some people managed to get some great deals on that uh, Imperial Magazine. That was clever. My, I didn't really have a local shop that's, that stocked that Imperial Magazine, unfortunately. So it's like the only way I got some of it was back orders. Which I guess is fine, but um, it would have been nice if there was a shop that stocked it. My LFG put Sangri Guard up for Clearus. Do you think they're going Legends? No. Um, they probably put them up in Clearance because no one's buying them because the rules suck so bad right now. Um, do I think we'll get Primaris version of Sangri Guard? Probably. Uh, at that point, will people rebuy all their Sangri Guard? I don't know. Uh, my plan was to just use my current models. I don't know if I feel like rebuying and painting 30 Sangard. Um, but the rules have been absolute dog for like uh, like six months, maybe even. Do you know what? The, the rules have been pretty bad since 10th edition came out. Like I don't, I don't remember them ever having good rules in 10th edition. Was there a period at the start of 10th edition? No, I don't think there was. I think the Death Company have always just been better than them, so... If your local shop put them up for sale, it's probably because no one's buying them. I would guess. I'd hazard a guess that that's why they're up for... for clearance. Why does no one use Whirlwinds anymore? Because they made them like 180 points, man, and they don't even really do any damage. Um, there's one build in the Ironstorm Detachment that's good. And the reason to take the Whirlwind was not its damage output, the reason to take the Whirlwind was because it gave you a fight first anywhere on the board. So, um... It kind of... Without that, I really don't know why you would take a Whirlwind, I guess. The reason you took it last edition was for the fight first. The resale on those magazines was huge, man. I should have bought a load of those magazines then, eh? I think I bought, like, the first couple issues. Um, and then I think I bought a couple of back orders, but I never went hard on the magazines. I honestly hope they focus on the Sangre Guard and leave the Death Company alone. Yeah, I mean, I have no idea what they'll do. I do think they were being carried a bit by the Death Company, though. Like, if they, if they remove the Death Company... It's gonna be pretty difficult, maybe. I guess we'll find out, right?
But yeah, the death company getting the full hit rerolls, I think, is just it really just amplifies why they're so much better than the death uh, than the Sangard. Like their damage output is just so so much better. Uh, the spam of Death Company is their downfall, too powerful for this edition, only infantry unit, they can delete most vehicles quite e easily. Yeah, I mean, the, it's the re-rolls of the hits that make the Death Company excel, I think. Um, you know, like where you need to normally use Oath of Moment to get those re-rolls, and, and I guess that's probably the problem with the Sangri Guard, is like, just point for point, the Death Company are always going to do better now because they get the rerolls to hit and they get the, the much higher strength. And it's like, um, who knows? I mean, if they change, if they change the balance on Death Company, which they might, I guess we'll need to start finding out something else. But I feel like surely the way that they do it is that they fix the Sangre Guard and they nerf the Death Company at the same time. Like, that's what you kind of hope, I guess, would happen, right? But I don't know. I don't know what will happen. Do firstborn arms scale okay with Primaris models in terms of kit bashing? They look a little bit small. I mean, like they're definitely like ten percent shorter than Primaris arms, firstborn arms. I mean, unless you're looking at the model super closely or you know that you converted it, you're probably not going to notice. But yeah, they're definitely a noticeable ten percent smaller or so. It looks like they skipped arm day in the gym. Well, I mean, they're also a little bit shorter, right? Not just smaller in terms of muscles, but shorter as well in, like, in terms of length. I given up trying to convert my death company man because every single edition they change something that makes the current build that I've got on the death company or something worthless. So I'm just running all the death company that I have with a assortment of arms and I'm just telling my opponents that they're that they're power fists and infernal pistols before the game. Uh, Sangre Guard of the Captain is looking really good in Sons of Sanguinius. I doubt that they look as good as Death Company, though, right? For the points. And you only get the minus one to hit and wound if, um, if it's your Warlord. So you can only do that with one squad, whereas you can do... You can do it with multiple squads with the Death Company, I guess. Terminator arms fit Primaris nicely. Ooh, someone will be having a fit if you put Terminator's arms, because people got very upset when I put, um, what did I do? I put, uh, 
I've lost a brush. How have I managed to lose a brush? Where the hell did it go? Oh, there it is. Um, people got very upset when I put the Primaris head. No, the tur. Yeah, that was it. I put a Primaris head on a Terminator's body. People were super upset with that. Now, uh, the Vitrix Scar can't be used with anyone else. That's correct. The Vitrix Scar do have cool slash unique helmets, though, don't they? They got like these hawk helmets we never really seen before. Well, yeah, we have never seen before and probably never see again, I guess. I like the Vitrix Guard helmets. I think they're very cool. I got Colin to give me one. I was like, Colin, when he was still collecting Ultramarines, I was like, give me one of those Vitrix Guard helmets so I can make a captain with a hawk helmet. He was like, okay. Like, he literally didn't care. I was like, cool, thank you. So I have one uh, of my Primaris Captains with the Vitrix Guard helmets. I like unique helmets for Space Marines, but it's hard to get a hold of them. Used to be able to take two of them for 55 points. How many wounds have they got these days? It's three wounds, right? Uh, there's been low, like there's been so many rumors about Blood Angels over the last 18 months, um, Fraser, and that like I just don't believe any of it now, because there was rumors that the Leviathan box was going to be Blood Angels. There was rumors before that that Blood Angels were going to get like another. Uh, there was another box I think rumored. Uh, Blood Angels have been like a source of rumors now for a couple of years. I probably. Like, I feel like I last made a rumor video. Yeah, when did I make my last rumor video? I'm going to tell you when I made my last rumor video because nothing came from that last rumors, that last band of rumors. Um, I'll just go into YouTube and uh, hold on. Content. Search your channels. Rumors. I last made a rumor video July. 2022 so almost two years to the day let me have a look at it um the rumor i mean rumor videos get views it gets six thousand views in like one day that's why people make rumors slash rumor videos i feel like i mean don't get me wrong i like six thousand views today we've got a bit of a um, what was the rumor? Let me see. It was like the generic marines are painted as blood angels and they're going to be the poster boys for the launch of so 10th edition along with the dark angels. They will both see large Primaris centric upgrades. It's going to be a launch focused on Imperial Nihilist with an Angels of Death codex coming. I mean, how much of that happened? So I think, yeah, I think after I did that and got egg on my face, because it was all BS, I think the better thing for me to do on my channel is just as soon as the new stuff gets announced and we have rules or data sheets or there's a blog post, then I'll just cover it when we actually know it's happening. We can all get excited about, or we can all hope for cool rumours and stuff, but I don't know, man. It does seem like Blood Angels just get these rumors after rumors after rumors and there's no truth to any of them. 
I don't know where they're starting or coming from, but like, that one that I covered on the channel is obviously complete baloney because Blood Angels were not the poster boys for the 10th edition box set. There's no Angels of Death Codex that I'm aware of because Dark Angels got their own codex and, um, yeah, I mean, I guess Dark Angels did get like a Primaris centric upgrade and stuff, but, um, we haven't seen anything about that for Blood Angels yet. So who knows? I'll cover it when it's official. There will be a big box when the Codex release says Robert. Well, you would think Robert, but like... Well then, and then, 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 then if that's the case, then that's what I'll cover it. But until we know what's in that box, it's really hard to speculate. I have heard that there's going to be a Brutalis Dreadnought. I, I did actually hear that rumour as well, which is an interesting rumour because I've had a Brutalis Dreadnought since it was released in Strike Force Augustus, which was like over a year ago now, and I've literally not even clipped one part off the sprue because I think it's like a... Well, I think it's garbage in, in on the tabletop. And like I said, all, all my painting, all my model building is very much based around what I think is good and what I think is strong. So if it's garbage, in terms of like its competitive rules, then I just end up not painting it and not building it. And that's where I am with the Brutalis Dreadnought, that's where I am with the Desolation Marines. What else was in that Augustus box set? Oh, the Heavy Intercessors. Well, case in point, the Heavy Intercessors are built and painted because I think Heavy Intercessors are really good. I prefer them to infiltrators. Hot take. It all happened for Dark Angels. I mean, yeah, I mean, it did happen for Dark Angels, but there was no Angels of Death. They, they didn't call it Codex Angels of Death or anything like that, right? The Brutalis has killed so many things. Yeah, I mean, I guess the Brutalis is good if you can deploy it into the opponent's army. I just don't see how you're supposed to do that. You're just going to run it across the, the battlefield for a couple of turns and your opponents aren't going to blow it away. Because if I saw it running across the battlefield as me, you can be sure as shit that's the one thing I'm going to blow away. Yeah, even Cambo. I don't think it was unlucky the other night. Uh, I think I played... I think I made three big mistakes in the game. Um, I think I know what all the mistakes are now, Cambo. I, I mean, I think I probably learned in the moment pretty quickly what the mistakes were, but... Uh, now I've thought about the game a bit, and I've thought about my army list. And I want to keep playing the same list for now. And... Um, keep learning the list. Because I, I can't, I'm not wanting to change anything, but I am, I am, I'm not wanting to change the list, but I am wanting to lose some games. Because when you lose, you learn. So it was good to lose. I feel like I learned something that, and in hindsight, it was, it, to me it's obvious how I should have played that game and ended up, like it was a, it was another, I've played Garen twice, both games would have, could have been winnable for me if I'd played better. So it's fine. Good to get the loss, good to learn something, I think. Uh, rapid Ingress to Brutalis. I guess that's one thing that I hadn't considered. Maybe. What does the Brutalis move? 8 or 10? Brutalis is expensive though, right? Yeah, I haven't considered rapid ingressing, but I'm usually rapid ingressing my uh, death company. I don't know if I feel like I could rapid ingress a Brutalis as well. I'm doing 75 points. I think they took it down, it's maybe not as bad as I thought it was.
Should I build a Brutalis Dreadnought? Should I add that to the list of things to do? I mean, I probably should build it just because it's had it in that box for like two years. And that's what I was saying earlier in the stream is like anything that you've had for a long period of time, you should just build it and get it ready because eventually it should probably be viable. It's, it's some addition at some point, arbitrary point in the future, it'll probably be quite viable. That's why I pr preach, I guess, right? Doesn't the Brutalis get a decent tank shock? Yeah, I mean, it gets an amazing tank shock, and it's got a... Uh, I believe it's on a... On a 2-up on the charge, you do mortal wounds as well. And I think if you roll a 6, you do flat 6 mortal wounds. So it, it definitely does mortal wounds. Like, up to 12 on the charge, I guess. I mean, realistically, it probably does half that, I suppose. Maybe slightly more than half. Like, maybe maybe on the charge it's doing like 8 mortals. Maybe that's why they've kept it so high, I just... I feel like you can't deep strike it for a 9 inch charge, because that's just, that's just a recipe for disaster. So yeah, maybe, I guess if, you, if your plan is to, to strategically rapid ingress in a Brutalis, I guess that's the play that I've really been considering. But it would be uh it would be uh like a strategic reserve. It's not it's not deep strike, right? It can't come on anywhere. It needs to come in with like six inches of the board edge. You rapid ingress melee units, not shooting ones. Yeah, you do, you do. Uh, but I feel like I'm already rapid ingressing in my death company. All right, my daughter's definitely up. One sec. Blood Angels need a Magna Grapple, yeah, I mean, if we do get a, a Death Company Brutalis and it's got a Magna Grapple, that could change a few, that could change a few, um, uh, preconceived weaknesses, I suppose. The Brutalis does not have smoke launchers, though, because on the, the Death Company Dreadnought, you give up the smoke launchers to get the Magna Grapple. That'll be interesting how they work that. Like... Yeah, I don't know how they're gonna work that. I don't know how they're gonna do that. But yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that rumour about the Brutalis Dreadnought. A Blood Angel's Brutalis Dreadnought. As it stands, I'm not sure how excited I am because I don't... I don't know if I can fit Brutalis Dreadnought into my list. And I definitely, I definitely feel like running it across the tabletop is not the right play because I don't think it's, I don't think it's durable enough for that. I mean, bloody, um, 
Space Marines really struggle with a lack of invuln saves. Or stuff like that, right? As for his cases, you play it off the back of a Storm Raven. Really? I mean, Storm Ravens are like wholly uncompetitive, dude. I haven't seen a single Storm Raven played in a game of of 10th edition. I played one one time in 9th edition, thought it was horrifically bad. And I think the 10th edition, it's a lot worse as well, right? Because its guns have got like a hell of a lot worse. Like it had pretty good firepower in 9th. In 10th, I think its guns are tragic. Like I would, like, I don't know if you could pay me enough money to make me want to feel the Storm Raven. Like I don't think they're good at all. For the points you pay for them, I'd, I'd, I would take a Land Raider every day of the week over the top of them. You were watching a video where a Dark Angels player... What do Dark Angels get that synergizes with a Land Raider? Straight says, hey, I've learned quite a few things from your breakdown. Well, thanks for watching, Straight. I do appreciate all the support I get, even from people that play other chapters. Thank you. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that crosses over between Marine factions, right? When you're painting a big tank and you've been painting it for a while, like multiple hours I guess at this point, and you still find bits of it that are just like painted white that you've never even put a coat of paint over the top. It's like how did I miss this on like the three extra paint sessions I already had on this? How is there still bits of this tank that are white? Scooting Dark Angels Iron Storm with Azrael. Um But the question I have is, would John rather run a Whirlwind or a Storm Raven? How can we force him to choose one soon? I I guess I would run the Storm Raven, man. Whirlwinds are horrifically overcosted. I guess at least the Storm Raven, like, yeah, we could put a Dreadnought into the Storm Raven, I suppose, and try and get it across the battlefield. I don't know what a Whirlwind's going to do for you. I guess it's going to kill, like, one enemy infantry a turn for 180 points. Um... Yeah, I'd, I'd run a storm even over a whirlwind. But hey, I'm I like I've got that GT that I'm hosting in like um. I was gonna say how long is that GT away? G uh, what is this? April, April, May, June. So I've got a GT that I'm hosting in like less than twelve weeks time. So I need to get I need to get a list ready, a good list. I don't want to do I don't want to be finished bottom bottom half of the GT that I'm hosting. I'd like to finish like top five or something. I mean anytime I go to a GT I'm generally aiming for top five. I don't get there very often, but that's generally what I like to I mean that's like a I feel like that's a good aim for me. Aim high. Buy an airbrush. Yeah I don't really have a good spot for airbrushing man I feel like I don't paint vehicles all that often. I mean, we're Blood Angels, right? Most of the time I paint infantry. Probably paint a ratio of like infantry 10 to 1 for vehicles.
Nope, I'm gonna drop the Land Raider. Uh, I'd be curious to see how the aggressor bomb works. I mean, the aggressor bomb is a is a gladius thing, right? Like it, and plus they've nerfed the aggressor bomb twice recently. Did you sell out all the tickets? Yeah, we sold out all the tickets in twenty four hours, Robert. We're actually pretty chuffed. So there was like one ticket left after 24 hours and we made like one post on the f on the thing saying like hey we're down to one ticket and it sold out in like the next five minutes. So it's a good it's a good omen because if it if it sells out this time and it, everybody enjoys themselves then we'll do it again. Um so we don't have that many tournaments that get hosted around where I live, so hopefully it goes well, you know? Um, don't be nervous about the GT, just go in there. I'll tell you a funny story actually, is I hadn't played at a tournament for about a decade. First tournament back, my very first game, Ennis Wilson. So like, you can, there's no point being nervous. Just rock up, play, see how it goes. I'll probably be more nervous than you, Marius, because because it's my event. I'll want to do well. But hey, I mean, the main thing to do is just to have fun, right? Like, generally, what I do um, at most events that I go to, when you line up at the table uh, to meet your opponent. Ask them straight up if they're happy to play by intent. What that means is if you say like, hey, I'm going to do this action, and then you get to the end of your movement phase and you forget to do this action, they're like, oh yeah, that's fine, you said that you were going to do that. Uh, then you'll have, then, you know, and it'll be chill. And then, and then that gives you a bit of leeway for like, inevitably, at some point, you know, like I play Colin a lot, he goes to a lot of tournaments, he always forgets something, you know, he's like, oh, I forgot to do my... Typhus is, um, oh, what the hell is it called? Basically a psychic power, like Typhus does like bolts of damage, mortal wounds at 18 inches, that's like his psychic power now. It's like, oh, I forgot to do Typhus' psychic power, do you mind if I do it? Then you just say, no, of course, go back and do it, as long as it's not like a two turns away or something. Um, and then that way, when you forget to do something, you say the same thing, and it's super chill and it's super easy, and most people... Unless you're like, unless you're basically playing on the table, the top table to win the event, most people are going to be pretty chill about it. Yeah, we might do one in the winter. Uh, just we've been wanting to do one in summer for a while, so or, because there's nothing going on in summer, I guess here. So that's why we've got this summer one. Could be good. I hope it'll be good. Alright, I've got about five, ten more minutes, guys. I'm going to take off and go to bed. Um, Steven Box talked a lot about playing with him by intent. Yeah, I mean, most people seem pretty cool by playing with by intent. You ask them before the game, it's usually... It's... it's I don't think I've ever played someone where I said, can we play by intent, and they just said no. McFadson, you're so welcome. Thanks for, uh, thanks for understanding. Sorry, I got a bit confused.
Yeah, 100%. I mean, well, first of all, we didn't know if we'd sell out all the tickets, Lamartis. So, like, if we weren't going to sell out all the tickets, it was going to make it difficult to do future events. Plus, it really goes on how well we do with the event, right? If people go away and say that's a great event, then we'll be able to sell more tickets in the future, maybe be able to look for a bigger venue, maybe be able to run a bigger event. You know, like, it really depends on how well we do, I guess. So, uh... But we're keen. I'm keen to do it, and I'm doing it with the channel where the guys always come on my channel, so I think it should be it should be a good GT um, I, I don't know would we like to do more? Yes, 100% Well, you guys waiting for me to say that I'm leaving and here's all the super chats. Thank you. Super chat, super chat. Appreciate it. Uh, Sons of Sanguinius, 1900 points with three Judiciars, Lamartis, three Rhinos, three Death Company Dreadnoughts, three 10 man Death Company Marines, one 10 man Death Company Pistols. Um, what can the. Ju the Judiciar can't attach to any of that stuff though, right? That's going to be a big problem because... Uh, the Judiciars need something to attach to. And also, the other problem with all that Death Company is... Um, yeah, you've got zero C. What Robert just said. You need chaplains for Death Company. I think... Personally, you need, like, if you have two squads of Death Company, like, I run two squads of Death Company, I have two chaplains. But I think you can probably run, like, three squads of Death Company with two chaplains, but you need to keep the chaplain number pretty close. So, like, I think the, the, the tournament list that was, like, did really well with all the Death Company a few weeks back, I think I had three chaplains. I think it had Lamartes, a chaplain with a jump pack, and a chaplain on foot. And I think if you're going to run like five squads of Death Company, you need like three chaplains. Like you need at least like 60%. Because otherwise all your Death Company have OC0, plus none of them can fall back, which is a big problem as well, because sometimes Death Company can be in a real sit shit, shit situation and desperately need to fall back. Um. Judas Yours are chaplains, aren't they? I don't think they've got the chaplain keyword. I'm pretty sh I mean, they look chaplain-y, but I'm Judas Yours don't have a chaplain keyword, right? Nah. They're not. I'm sure they're not. I'll check. Data sheets, Judiciar, Judiciar. They do not. They have a keyword which is Judiciar. They can attach to Assault, Intercessors, Blade Guards, Infernus, Intercessors, Stern Guard, or Tactical Squads. They're junior chaplains in the lore. Well, I guess sometimes the lower doesn't carry over properly into the game. It's a little bit frustrating, but that's the way it is, I, I guess. Um, if you're desperate to run a list that's got a bunch of Death Company like that, Rexer, uh, and thanks so much for the 5 USD, um, go have a look. Uh, you know that there's a playlist on the channel that's called, like, Competitive Armies, right? Or Competitive Army Lists. If you, if you go to, if you click, if you're watching any of my videos, if you click my name, like where it says underneath, like Blood Angels Commander, and you click playlists, like in the channel, there was a list there that I reviewed like less than a month ago. So it'll be like one of the first videos in that playlist, which was, um, which was a list that like 
it either won a tournament or came second. And it was like that, like so much Death Company. I think it had seven Death Company squads, maybe it was eight. Um, but that's what you want to, I mean, that would be the one to look at, right? I'm going to paint these steps and then I'm taking off. So if you got any last questions, now is the time. But yeah, watch that video because that guy obviously ran like seven squads of Death Company and basically was a stone throw away from winning an event. If you can't find it, I can find it for you. But I mean, I do try and put all my videos into playlists uh, that make sense. So if you are like new or if you want to find specific stuff, it's all there in the playlists. Best unit I found for the Judy CR is the Blade Guard. Yeah, 100% Rezio. Um, I like mine a lot. I feel like I get value out of them almost every time I run them. I always seem to make a lot of saves with my uh, Blade Guard as well. I always, like other units, when I've got like a four up save, I always seem to fail. But with the Blade Guard, they always seem to do well with their saves. I don't know what it is about me and Blade Guard. Apparently, they save really well for me. I mean, I do use the thing that gives them the better saves in the combat phase when it when it's a you know when there's an opportunity to use that and it's going to be effective. I do use it. Stormshield Vanguard Vets with the uh, um, Priest. I'm sure I did a math video on their survivability. Did I not do a video on that? I'm, sh I'm, I'm, I'm like 90% I'm sure I made a survivability comparison on that Vanguard Veteran squad with the Priest attached. Could be wrong, but I'm, I feel like I did it maybe like a month, month and a half ago. All right, thanks so much for watching tonight, guys. It was nice to see you all. Um, don't have an opponent yet for Wednesday night, uh, so I'll text my friends tomorrow and see if we can get an opponent for Wednesday night. Um, that's probably... Oh, no, I'll be, I mean, I'll be live tomorrow night to look at some army shows. Uh, army shows. I'll be live with the army show tomorrow night to look at some army lists. So be able to catch me tomorrow night from about 8 UK time if you want to come and look at some army lists. Um... And then I'll see what, hopefully by then I'll know uh, what's happening on Wednesday night. I've got a battle on Wednesday night. Um, enjoy the rest of your Saturday night, guys. Uh, thanks so much for hanging out. Thanks. Uh, for the ongoing support from everyone that's member but also thanks for the super chats the guys that i think there's some super chats from new people tonight so much appreciated um have a great evening i'll see you tomorrow night 8 p.m uk time so about three hours earlier from when it is right now so 21 hours from now we'll see some of the some of you then have a great evening where's my camera oh it's over here peace peace see you tomorrow Nope. That's my full screen camera. That's not the button I'm looking for. That's the button. Good night.